Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing well, staying safe and staying indoors. Today we're going to do a watch along. We're going to do Dark Side of the Ring. I, like everyone else, has been just gripped and uh, rooted to my television screen watching Dark Side of the Ring every single week on Vice. Um, if you haven't seen Dark Side of the Ring or you're not aware of what it is, it's a documentary series that focuses on some of the darker happenings inside a professional wrestling ring or some of the stories of a darker nature in and around the wrestling industry. So in season one, they covered the likes of the killing of Bruiser Brody, Gino Hernandez's death, um, the tragedy of the Bon Erics, and in season two, of course, you know, infamously, they covered the Chris Benoit scandal and the death of Eddie Guerrero, the death of Nancy Argentino and Jimmy Snooker, and the brawl for all. So it, it, it is really, it's it's not even, I think the concern going into when people think of wrestling documentaries is that everyone thinks they're going to be shoot interviews, aren't they? And don't get me wrong, I, I, I love shoot interviews and um, I love seeing that insight to the business and the behind the scenes nature of the business. But sometimes wrestling documentaries can lack slightly in the production element or the production quality. Um, but that just really isn't the case with Dark Side of the Ring. The production quality is so high and um, the, the setup is so good. And honestly, if you haven't watched it, if you haven't seen any of the episodes, go and watch them. As I said, we're in the second season now, and the episode we're going to watch today is episode seven, I believe, of the of the second season, which is all about um, David Schultz and the slap around heard around the world. Uh, David Schultz, of course, was a wrestler for WWEF in the 1980s. Uh, Dr. D. David Schultz, uh, close friends of Hulk Hogan at the time. I don't believe they're on the best of terms, terms today. But um, this is going to be an interesting one. I haven't watched it yet, so my reaction is going to be the first reaction, um, the first time I watched it. So it's that's going to be interesting. And I'll be honest, like I know, uh, obviously this t took place in the eighties, um, you know, the start of the big uh, WWE rise in the eighties. And obviously, look, I'm not, I wasn't born then, I wasn't around then. I know the history briefly of the ABC 2020 uh, expose on WWE and professional wrestling. Uh, I, like everyone else, have seen the clip of David Schultz slapping the reporter that's gone round and round and round for years and years and years. But I don't really know the nitty gritty and I don't really know the full behind the scenes aspect of it. So I'm fascinated by this. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this. So we've got the episode ready to play, so I'll give you a bit of a countdown and then we can press play at the same time and watch it together in this watch alarm. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. In fairness, David Schultz looks absolutely great still. I mean, in comparison to... Uh, to some of the other wrestlers from the 80s nowadays, the ones that are still around, of course, sadly, because so many are not, um, I think it looks great. And they've actually got the reporter who asked the infamous question to David Schultz. Uh, I'm sure he's going to come off well in this documentary. The thing is, look, most people watching this documentary are going to be wrestling fans. Of course, they're going to be some casual viewers. Um, flipping through the channels if anyone does that nowadays. Um, but, man, he's got a gun. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're, most people watching this are going to be wrestling fans, so I think the non-wrestling guy trying to um, look down on the business, look down his nose at the business, isn't going to come off well. I don't even think that's a spoiler to so. say. This might be a, uh, a slightly controversial take. I really, I'm a huge fan of Chris Jericho. Everyone knows that, and um, huge fan of all of his work. Um, and obviously, he is the narrator here for season two, for Dark Side of the Ring. And I understand why his name recognition is bigger, and it just it makes more sense. But I, I do have a soft spot for um, for Dutch Mantel. I, I I thought his narration in the first season was tremendous, and it was just it felt more professional wrestling. I don't know if that's just because of his southern tone or his old school way of speaking. But uh, yeah, I like Dutch Mantel's narration. As I'm always fascinated as well when you see um, 
old school professional wrestlers go through their um, memorabilia that they keep, as we see Dr. D in his storage container going through some stuff, and now he's got a stun gun in his hand. Even now, at the age he is now, I mean, I don't know how old he is now, but Dr. D is still terrifying. Like, you would not... Why on earth did that report ask him that question? Because even now, he's terrifying. The greatest wrestler of all time, he has just called himself. Now, that is a hell of a statement, isn't it? <laughs> he saw wrestling on a telly and went, this is not hard. Man. It's fascinating, isn't it, when you see old, old wrestling footage like this on the television now from Herb Welch. You know, I just imagine, I can't even imagine what it was like, you know, obviously going to watch wrestling then it was a sport, it was completely protected. Um, but just imagine the kayfabe workings backstage, by all accounts you'd have, you know, separate dressing rooms to finishes and it was almost half a work, half a shoot. It's, uh, it's always interesting to see. Always interesting to see. I'd like to know what is, like he, Jim Cornette's just saying now, it, you know, when they when these people were trained back in those days, they would just beat them up. That was the training. And is he serious? What he's talking about now? Is he Is he genuinely serious? He's talking about he, he's talking about going backstage, taking a dump and rubbing it on his armpit and then grabbing a headlock. That is mental. That is mental. I mean, that is some next level sinister stuff there. Or oh, sinister sinister, you know what? The stuff he's got under his armpit. Man oh man. And I, th I think what's interesting here is David Schultz is kind of um, admitting it now that he thought it was real and he had to almost be told that it was a it was a work. They talk about kayfabe now. It's it 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 is interesting because I'm one of those people that look. I there's no. There's no, you know, it's it's clear, it's 2020 nowadays, 2020 ironically, but it's 2020 and everyone knows it's a work. But I, I think professional wrestling could do a little bit more with kayfabe, even now. And maybe that's just because, you know, I watch things like this or maybe I watch, you know, old documentaries or I watch old professional wrestling from the 80s and, you know, the 70s. But I just... I, I think they could do with a bit more kayfabe. The business could do with a little bit more protecting. And even if that's, you know, just you're not seen out and about with your opponent or something, or you don't congratulate your opponent on social media afterwards or something of, of that effect. I just think, I don't know. Professional wrestling is the best when, it is, when, it, when they try their best to make it real, you know. I wonder who this person could be on the screen right now. That's right. It is Hulk Hogan. Look at the size of him. He was, I mean, absolutely ginormous, wasn't he? Ginormous. I think it's, again, it's... It, it's interesting to hear the relationship between Dr. D and Hulk Hogan because, as I mentioned at the start of this video, they were quite well known for being very uh, close friends at one point. And then I believe after all of this incident happened in the in the WWE with the 2020 expose, they um, no longer became our friends and Dr. D has said some quite disparaging thing about him over the years. But... um. 
yeah, it's, it's always interesting that, to see Hulk Hogan prior to Hulkamania, isn't it? That's because it's everything we've known. We've always known Hulk Hogan as Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania and this mythical, larger than life character. And um, seeing him before that just oh, it almost is incomprehensible to me because I've never known him be anything different. That silhouette's pretty decent as well for Hulk Hogan now. Prior to this, I, I saw that they were going to be doing an episode on Dr. Death, so uh, Dr. Death, Dr. D. I've got Brawl for all stuck in my head uh, on Dr. D, and I watched a few promos, and I've shown them now on the on the TV screen that Dr. D, David Schultz did, and um, his promo was great. His promo is great. It's a very 1980s promo. You know, it's a lot of shouting. Um, but I saw, and I don't know if they'll do it in this documentary. Um, uh, this is the one I was just about to say. I was. This is the thing about um, with his wife and child. Did Vince Man just call him a stupid idiot? Chris Jericho, gimmick infringement. Yeah, this segment is nuts. And the sheriff wanted... The sheriff goes into Vince's office and want David Schultz for spousal abuse and child abuse. And the whole thing is a work. It's not his guns. Vince brought the guns. And it was not his wife, it's not his kids, it was just a it was just a segment. I mean, talk about heat. That is that is legitimate heat. Like he, the people wanted to arrest him. Although I suppose that again, this goes back to kayfabe, doesn't it? You know, when they come in, do you say to him, look, it's not real? I suppose you do, because you don't want to get arrested. Here he is, John Stossel. As I mentioned, you could just know he's going to come off terribly. <laughs> you know that people are going to come off terribly. From um, I've only ever seen I haven't seen his work like they're just talking about it now, but I've I've only ever seen the clip of him asking Doctor D the the question, the infamous uh, fake question, and even that I thought his sort of tone of voice, his I don't know the, his his cadence, the way he asked it just came off as so disrespectful and and so rude that just regardless of whether he's, you know, breaking any, you know, kayfabe laws of professional wrestling, um, I thought it's just his tone of and the way he asked the question was just rude. Obviously, if you're talking about kayfabe and exposing the business, you've got to have Jim Cornette in this documentary. Watch him blow a gasket. I think this is uh, it's an interesting point, isn't it? Because he's he's looking at it. John Stossel is in the sense that WWE or professional wrestling at the time were conning people, um, presenting something whether whereby it wasn't presenting something that it wasn't, and it's it's for me it's a difficult one because I I understand I almost do sympathise with him. I understand what he's trying to say at the time. But you've got to remember, WWE at the time, they were already kind of telling people that it was a work. They were presenting themselves as sports entertainment, and they were doing that to avoid the tax hits in certain states and avoid the athletic commissions in certain states. And I mean, I think they'll probably talk about David Schultz's um, ramifications with the athletic commission later on, because New York has quite a stringent athletic commission. But... I, <laughs> I think this idea that WWE were, were conning people at the time isn't necessarily the, the case. Professional wrestling as a wider, as a wider industry, maybe, maybe that is that is possible. But um, I don't know. Was the con really hurting anyone? And it was entertainment, you know. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. Like he says there, oh, um, we, they did a, a, a survey saying a third of the people that attended the events thought it was real. Why does it matter if it isn't? Uh, what are they losing? What are they lo- what are they losing if they if they if they think it's real? I don't think it hurts them anyway, does it? You know, I I would say I bet even probably a quarter of the audience today watching WWE might think it's real. That quarter would probably be the young kids. I remember I thought professional wrestling was real until, I don't know, I, I, I can't even pinpoint the first time I realised it was a work, but it was relatively younger, obviously we had the internet and the secret was out by that point, but, um, you know, when I was a kid, I think everyone when they're a kid, most people think, you know, professional wrestling is real and they don't know it's a work and they don't know any of those, of those elements to it, um, I just, I just don't understand the the issue of people believing you know you wouldn't have a 2020 do an expose on people believing you know santa claus is real would you or you wouldn't have a problem going oh, we you know we surveyed how many people that would believe the tooth fairy was real you know you wouldn't do you wouldn't go oh it's terrible you know and then catch people putting money under their child's pillows for the tooth fairy spoiler kids that's how it happens Maybe I'm just as bad as this guy on the screen right now. I'm exposing it. I've always uh, thought this element of it was interesting when it comes to these exposés because there's been a couple of them over the years. Obviously, there wasn't just this one. There was a a couple of other ones about, you know, how, how people throw punches, how people do leapfrogs, how people do body slams, all of that stuff. I think that people are shocked that they could find a wrestler that would expose the secrets. you got to think of the industry you're in. <laughs> you know, this isn't exactly an industry where people, are, you know, have a huge amount of pride or loyalty. So to have, um, so to have someone actually expose the secrets isn't exactly revelatory but it's you know career suicide how could you ever expect to work again after this and i'm sure there were people in the industry with that wanted to protect it and needed it to be protected and probably willing to kill this guy And so looking looking back on this, it just seems it almost just seems silly. I mean, these documentaries happen on the uh, on the WWE network now. You have like Breaking Ground, and you have you know full WWE twenty fours, which are you know behind the scenes, don't we? But let's be honest, um, like Doctor D said, there if you put him in the ring with Doctor D, he could do the exact same stuff with him, but he could make it hurt. So there is a difference. This is the one where it's it's too far for me. He's getting the blade out. And he's going to... No, what a load of rubbish. He's saying, oh, they're asking me to show the blade, show the blade. I wanted to talk about other stuff, but they show the blade. Well, you know what you got yourself in for. You know, you can't imagine when you signed up to it. And there he goes, he's just bladed. And the thing is with blade, and, and like I've said to this quite a few times, you know, I've uh, for me, blade still has a, a place in, in wrestling. Blood has a place in wrestling. It heightens the story. It, it makes it, you know, more dramatic. It makes it more real. To me, just look at the double enough match between Dustin Rhodes and Cody Rhodes last year. For me, would that match have been as good with, without the blood? I don't think so. But just to do it cold there and on television, that's just, you know, all of it's a no-no in professional wrestling, isn't it? But it's just, it's just, 
Yeah. Yeah, I agree with David Chops there. Uh, Eddie Mansfield, he's he's trying to say that he's doing it for the the boys and he's doing it for health insurance and he's doing it to, you know, stop promoters and stuff like that, which is well and true. I understand that. I understand, like, wrestlers should get health insurance, they should get a 401k, they should get all of this stuff. But how But how do you get that when you, uh, you know, potentially damaging the industry that you work in there? And how do you get that when you're blading yourself on, on national television? You just don't. You don't. It, 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 I, yeah, I, he's, he's trying to justify a bad decision he made there, I think, personally. This is the interesting one as well, I suppose, is that um, you can go back to the question of how did they, how did how did they even get into Madison Square Garden in the first place? Because if you, if you think about it, like the, surely they should just if they just weren't let in, I guess they were press, and we know what, um, but how much Vince Man loves press and loves having mainstream coverage, not this kind of mainstream coverage, but they must have been allowed in by someone. Obviously, and that person would have been Vince McMahon, and he said, "You <laughs> even the report goes, oh, you're a, you're a little, he's a little bit frightening.' Well, why would you ask the question then? Yeah, that's what Jim Cornette said. Why would you go out to Schultz? And here it is. He's going to slap him any second now." we go again this goes back to my original point he just it's the way he asks it for me is completely wrong Jim Cornette said he didn't even hit him that hard I mean could have hit him harder that's absolutely true he could have knocked him out but it yeah, still would have hurt <laughs> Bang. But again, uh, this is what I was saying before. I don't think... Look, if you're a good journalist, if you're a good journalist, you can ask good questions. And I don't think he asked the question correctly. Would you go into anyone else's work and say... And try and delegitimize it? You know, regardless of what it is, would you go into a, you know, a fast food restaurant and say, I don't think this is very difficult? You'd probably get a slap from them. You know? Uh, for me, and again, how how do you ask that question? You you didn't ask the question properly. Why didn't you just say, you know, some people have questions about the legitimacy of the sport. Is it real or is it fake? Or is it predetermined? They don't like the F word. Is it predetermined? Don't just come out wordlessly and say, I think it's fake. Because for me, again, you just go, well, that's just rude. The way you're asking that question is rude. And it isn't right to slap someone, obviously, but I do sympathise with David Schultz there in the sense of he says, look, that's how people would have reacted to me. And you've got to remember, in the wrestling industry, if someone had said that to the people that trained him or if he said that to anyone else backstage, they would have probably done the same thing. So I do really, really sympathise with him because, um, yeah, I, I sympathise with him immensely because he was told by Vincent Mann to protect the business he did and he almost gets vilified for it you know he was he was trying to be almost a good employee and trying to protect the industry which he works in and um, I, I, sim I do sympathize with him tremendously it's not right to slap someone behind the head um, it's absolutely not but it's um, but I do sympathize with him I, I, I do sympathize I think it's he was it's a difficult situation So he's saying there that the New York Athletic Commission suspended him and uh, all of that stuff. And hey, look, again, <laughs> um, it, again, to me it seems a strange one because um, I, I, I don't know at that point if the Athletic Commission would have been aware. They must have been aware that it was a work.
he said that Eddie Mansfield said that he had you know death threats and people trying to plant narcotics on him. Um, and he wants to get out of the south. I mean, maybe just get out of the country. <laughs> it's, I think, um, and to be honest, like again, I'm not justifying any of that stuff. Of course, I'm not. But it, you got to expect some blowback because you're going to be costing a lot of wealthy people a lot of money. Sorry, I was a bit, sorry, no, that was a bit, quite a bit of dead air there. I was just listening to his um, Eddie Mansfield explanation of saying it killed his career, and he was, but it was good because he he's better off outside of the business, and he's but the promoters screw the the boys, and that's just that's just silly. It's just silly. It's just silly. I don't think he's coming off particularly well. Just. So Doctor D's been sent to Japan and <laughs> and they want him to do it again to a reporter in Japan, and which of course he has. That's probably not the best idea there, is it? And I think he even realises that. You know, you're getting potentially sued and they said, was it a thousand people have called in to check John Stossel's well-being? And... Um, yeah, not the best idea to recreate in Japan. I understand their reasoning because it got a lot of press and that's what they want to capitalise on. But this is a, a legitimate <laughs> legal situation coming up. I don't think it's the right call there. And again, this is a one way. So he's talking about suing for damages. He wants compensation for for his pain. But... I suppose at the end of the day, look, you you can't you can't attack people, you can't hit people, and he's justified in getting the compensation. Um, it just seems a bit I don't know. It doesn't necessarily sit completely right with me. It's a bit shady because I suppose cooler heads should prevail in that situation, shouldn't they? You shouldn't you shouldn't have to slap them. I thought he was incredibly rude, <laughs> which doesn't justify slapping someone at all, by the way. But I don't know. It just. Maybe that's because I'm a wrestling fan, like I said. So Dr. T's telling the story here that obviously in the lawsuit, he wasn't necessarily named. It was Vince McMahon that was named. And Vince McMahon wanted him to say that it was all Dr. D on his own accord. However, in his opinion, Vince McMahon told him not necessarily to slap him, but he told him to protect the business and be a heel. Which is an interesting one. Oh, I've heard this it's this story before about him going to uh, starts with going to a uh, a WWE doctor, and uh, the doctor saying that he's holding on to the pain for the lawsuit. We trying to again. It's a bit of a strange one because he's trying to suggest that um, the, he's trying to imply that <laughs> the WWE doctor um, said that he was still holding on to the pain for the lawsuit, and he's and he's surprised that he said that. He's a WWE doctor. Of course, he's going to say that. He's not going to examine you and be like, oh, you know, he's he's terrible he's in pain you should pay him more money uh, they settled eventually um out of court for he says about two hundred eighty thousand. so he got his money in the grand scheme of things to vince man is that a big chunk of change i suppose at the time it was 1980s two hundred thirty thousand or whatever it was the whole lot of money
I wasn't aware of his altercation with Mr. T. That's crazy, isn't it? His altercations with Mr. T. He said, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you're going to have uh, interact with Mr. T, you're going to be fired. Well, I can't, if you're going to have to fire me, then fires him. And he gets, um, he gets arrested. He gets, we well, goes down to ringside to see his friend who's sitting next to Mr. T and then gets hogtied on the floor, guns at the back of his head. Am I the only one that has heard contrasting... Yeah, I was going to say, just going into this now, contrasting things. Yeah. He slaps Mr. T. So again, I, that's the story that I'd heard. I'd heard um, the story that he'd... I'd heard the stories that he'd um, he he slapped Mr. T and said some derogatory things to him, and that's why he was released. Although he's saying there that he didn't touch him at all, I uh, I I would I don't the thing is you can't believe everything Hulk Hogan says. Lord knows how much has he made up and exaggerated and over exaggerated throughout the years. Wasn't he meant to be like the lead guitarist from Metallica or something like that? You saw how that went. So yeah, I don't I don't know believe that one. But I doubt he would have just got, you know, arrested and a gun to the back of his head for doing nothing. Um Yeah, here's the clip of Hulk Hogan. This is this is ugly. When he chokes him out. Puts him in a sleeper. And look there, limp. And hits his head on the floor. And his head, you can see blood. Yeah, that's a very good point. Because it is interesting, isn't it? Because... There, there was a settlement, but like, <laughs> what is the difference between the Hogan and um, Dr. D thing? There isn't one. There isn't one. You know, you think about it. Dr. D, Dr. D slaps someone and he gets fired. And then Hulk Hogan chokes someone out and cuts the back of his head open and he remains a champion. Of course, they weren't going to fire Hulk Hogan like, like Jim Cornette said. That person who was just portraying Hulk Hogan looked nothing like him, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it was like the, like the worst silhouette. But yeah, what is the difference between uh, what is the difference between the Hogan and um, what is the difference between the Hogan and Doctor D situation there? I don't, I don't think there is really. If anything, the Hogan one I would say is worse because I mean, Doctor D slapped some guy twice, but. Hogan choked him out, rendering him unconscious, and he cut the back of his head. I mean, I know if, if you was to go to a court of law, I think the Hogan one would be a lot, a lot worse than the Doctor D ones. Um, but like he said, is that Hulk Hogan's not going to get sacked or fired. <laughs> and Doctor D, imagine Doctor D. Becoming a bounty hunter, and like imagine you had like you know some arrest warrant out on you, and then 
<laughs> and then you see Dr. D <laughs> come to your front door to arrest you or claim a bond. And that, that would be terrifying. God, can you imagine? be terrifying bounty hunter to be fair he does seem like the right kind of guy to be a bounty hunter doesn't he because he seems absolutely insane and I wouldn't want to be picked up by David Schultz would you and that's it it's only for 10% of the bond that's crazy so I didn't know that part of it I didn't know that um that David Schultz was a was a bounty hunter. I was not aware of that. Mm. <laughs> like with uh, David Schultz's ways of getting into things, oh, that looks that is pretty easy. He says at the start of it, I saw wrestling on the telly. I thought that was easy, so he did it. He arrests someone uh, as a bounty hunter. Gets the money and goes, that was easy. <laughs> That's just two ways of getting into the industry to see if it's easy. Is it bad if I say that, he, you know, he looks like a bounty hunter? I mean, he does. So was he, you know, the original dog, the bounty hunter? I suppose maybe he was. Look at that. Look at all those names. And I didn't realise this was a, you know, this was a TV programme. I might have to do a bit of a a Google search or a, a YouTube search to see what's, um, see what's out there right now. What these uh, David Schultz Bounty Hunter programme. This is crazy. Yeah, imagine, imagine, I said, imagine David Schultz turning up to your front door. They talk about, they said he's most successful. I don't doubt it. Because he, he would have been crazy. He's talking about, you know, picking up some person that wasn't found for three years by the FBI, kidnapped two girls. God. I suppose it's almost a, a bit of a redemption story then in the end. If it'd be literally, uh, you know, rescuing people, I know, for money, but who doesn't do anything for money? That's crazy. And he still calls himself Dr. D, even as a bounty hunter. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? That's crazy. So he's, you know, rescued two girls, a, a child. Yeah, they said it's kind of like living an action movie and... That's what it is. That's crazy. I mean, it's a dangerous job, isn't it? But, um, man, what a life. I mean, I didn't even know that, that side of it. I didn't know that side of it. Yeah, this is what I was, this is what I mentioned. So I wasn't aware of what full, fully which year that um, Vincent Mann sort of began lifting the veil for sort of tax purposes and saying it was sports entertainment, not work, and then... and said it's sports entertainment. So like, I think David Schultz is trying to say that, like, what's the point of everything that happened to me then? He exposed the whole business. I guess, hey, money talks, isn't it? I 
I suppose, like I said, if you were a um, if you are a David Schultz and you know you've been essentially ran out of the business for protecting it, and then you find out that it's that it's that, you know that they've basically saying that sports entertainment. Um, gosh, you would be you would have a few rights to be pretty pretty annoyed about that. Oh God, this is Eddie Mansfield. Oh, he's just he, Larry's coming out going, "Oh, Vince Vince McMahon came out and said it was sports entertainment. He justified what I did and all of this sort of stuff." What a load of! I mean, he's just trying to find himself, you know, justification, isn't he? He's just trying to find himself for being for just you know for being correct in what he did and exposing the industry and. Just what a load of rubbish. He's he's trying to he tried to cash in and hurt the industry that he said hurt him, and now he's trying to say that he was protecting the industry and he was tr- pretending to help the industry. It's just like, what a load of rubbish. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I do. I said I do. I do sympathise with David Schultz. I do. Hmm. Well, what is David Schultz doing now? I don't think he's doing the bounty hunting anymore. That was awesome. I loved uh, seeing the bounty hunter side of things. Maybe he was the original dog, the bounty hunter. I'm going to go have a look at, um, find some of those, find some of those, because it looked like it was a a, a Japanese television show, didn't it? So, um, yeah, if it was a Japanese television show, I'm going to see if I can try and find it. David Schultz chasing people down with guns. It was awesome. But just imagine, imagine what if, imagine what if. Yeah, that was a good point. Jim Connett's just talking about what I was, oh, I was literally just about to say, if this hadn't happened, what what career would have, uh, what 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 career would have Doctor D had in WWE? And like he's just said, he was a, he was almost like an NWA, you know, old school wrestler in um, a sports entertainment company and. WWE was becoming, you know, cartoon, ice cream bars, the Disney of uh, of wrestling, and Doctor D just didn't really fit in to that image, and he didn't. So I don't think he would have lasted particularly longer. Maybe he would have been this cartoon hero. I just don't think. I don't think that would have. Um, I don't think he would have fitted into that that company. Do you? I, it just doesn't seem to be his. <laughs> is kind of environment without a doubt I don't think good John Soss was saying people coming up to him going are you the guy that got whack- whacked by the wrestler good I still think the way he asked the question was rude maybe he doesn't deserve to get slapped around the face and slapped around the head but I still think it was rude <laughs> you see, him walk, but you see Doctor Two walking off after he slaps. You see Vince like walking around, go, "What just happened? <laughs> like, what just happened?" I <laughs> get what you asked for, I suppose. Oh, he said, "F you, David, the reporter," and they've just gone to a shot of David Schultz holding the gun. I don't think he would say that, and I, I, without a doubt, he would not say that to his face as well, even if he was holding a gun or not. If he said that to his face again. David Schultz would smack him in the face again. And that's the episode. Well, to be honest, I I enjoyed that. I I definitely um, learned some things there that I I wasn't aware of. Obviously, like I said at the start of the video, I was aware of some of the details about uh, 2020 and didn't know about David Schultz's bounty hunter career. I knew that I heard about his incident with Mr. T and all, all of that stuff. So... Another really interesting, um, never interesting episode, and um, not as heavy as as some of the ones in the last few weeks. We there's been quite a lot of death, hasn't there, in this uh, in this season so far? When you think of the Benoit, you think of the Nancy Argentino, you think of the Dino Bravo episode. We know that the Owen Hart episode is coming up. Um, 
I would say this one, I suppose, is probably a little bit more light-hearted or as light-hearted as it can get, uh, maybe apart from the brawl for all. But this is, I suppose, it's dark side of the ring. It's always going to be, um, you know, more darker tones and um, sadder stories, I suppose. But this is, I guess, as more light-hearted as it's going to get. And it suppose, exposes the behind-the-scenes, old-school kayfabe element of the industry, which I'm fascinated with. And I'm always fascinated with things that happened in the 80s. So enjoyed that one and just always going to enjoy this this series. Um, I heard the other day that they've been greenlit for a season three. So uh, there's more episodes of come, to come. So um, what episodes, future episodes, would you be interested in seeing in season three? We have, I believe, two more episodes left. Uh, three more episodes left um, for season two, which is, as I mentioned, the season finale is the Owen Hart episode, and they have the Road Warriors episode, and then we also have the Herb Abrams and UWF episode next week. So three more episodes, but we know that we are going to get a season three. So what do you think is going to be in season three? Let me know in the comment section below. What did you think of this episode with David Schultz, Dr. D? What did you think of his story, the reporter's story, Hulk Hogan's story, all of that stuff? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Rest News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner on the screen right now. Or if you wait a few more seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Or you can go to our channel and subscribe to us there. Don't forget, you can also follow Rest News 365 on all of our social media platforms. Make sure you do that to not miss out on a single piece of content. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'm sure I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.